Welcome back to Marching Arts Network Television. My name is Kanan, also known as The Tumor, simply because I march spot B9, not because I'm malignant, and shout out to all my B9 tumor homies out there. Uh, right, in today's show, we are going to have a look at, I think it's kind of interesting, and that is, well, first things first, before we go, before we go any further, let's address the elephant in the room. Uh, I'm recording this on the 4th of April, and of course, uh, we had the very recent, very unfortunate news that the cadets have filed for bankruptcy. The cadets are no more. They're never, ever coming back. Horrible as it is, that is the fact. Um, the thing I want to address is there's this common misconception out there that this is because of the modern touring model, because of electronics, because of, of uh, costumes and props. This has nothing to do with any of that. And if that's what you think, then you need to do a bit of research and you'll find out that this is not the case. This folding is completely different than anything that's happened before. Um, it is uh, a combination of self-inflicted wounds with also laws the way that they are written. Uh, whether you agree with them or disagree with them, the laws are written the way that they're written that allowed for uh, litigation to happen. And unfortunately, this litigation was something that the court just could not uh, weather. Um, so that's all I'm going to say on the subject. Um, but we are in a unique position where we have 26 cores now that have competed in DCI finals that, uh, no longer exist. So what I've done is I've put together a super hardcore, uh, I actually genuinely did spend quite a bit of time on this. I've put together a list and I factored in four factors, um, and I've assigned points to each of those four factors that uh, has worked out what I've considered to be the top 12 based on historical impact uh, of those cores. So um, the criteria were the number of appearances, the average finish. I've given uh, credit for top five finishes as well as championships. I'll put the criteria and the list and all that stuff somewhere in, in, in the comments section below. Um, but what we are left with is, well, the beauty of this is there's 26 cores on, on the list, but there's nobody didn't make top 25 because we have a four, we have a three-way tie uh, for 24th place between the Blue Raiders, Dutch Boy, and the Stockton Commodores. We then have a 22nd place tie between the Black Knights and the Purple Lancers. The Black Knights, if just Google them, the most badass uniform in the history of drum corps. 21st place, the Royal Crusaders. We then have a 19th place tie between the De La Salle Oaklands and the Des Plaines Vanguard. 18th place was the Seneca Optimists. 17th place was the Oakland Crusaders. 16th place, North Star. 15th place, Guardsmen. 14th place, Argonne Rebels. And in the unfortunate position of 13th place on the list that no drum corps wants to be on is uh, Magic of Orlando. I'll bet you wish Grant Crocker got his way through that uh, through that list as uh, quick as I did. However, in 12th place, we have the Muchachos. Um, and the impact score for them was a 36.1. In 11th place, with an impact score of 39, is the Sky Riders. In 10th place is the Velvet Knights with a 55.2. Followed up by the Kilties with a 55.6 in 9th place. 8th place with a score of 66.5 is the Anaheim Kingsmen. Um, so you think, how did the Kingsmen get on this list? They only made finals three times. Yeah, but they won one. They won it once, and their average finish was in the top five. 7th um, place, the Freelancers with a score of 67, and that will be the cutoff point for today's video. In the next video, we'll look at, in 6th place, Suncoast Sound with a 68.6, .6, and then 5th place with an 87.8, .8, the Bridgman. Fourth place with 144.2 of on this impact score is the Glassman from Toledo, Ohio. Third place with 151.9 is Star of Indiana. And now again, you might look at that and think, well, why are the Glassmen so close to Star of Indiana? Well, Star of Indiana was only in finals nine times, whereas Glassmen were in 16 times. Second place, 27th Lancers with uh, 176.2. And in first place, and if this doesn't, demonstrate the impact of the loss of this core is the cadets mind you second place was 176.2 with a score of 968.8 is the cadets 44 appearances 34 of those in the top five an average finish of 4.5 and 10 dci world championships 
that is impact folks so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at cores 12 through 7 little snippets it's not gonna be a hugely long video today I hope I say that every time but it's usually about 45 to 50 minutes um, if you like what we do what I would ask is in the comment section below drop us a comment let us let us know what you think uh, also uh, while you're down there if you're not already uh, hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, had a look at the uh, analytics and the vast majority of people that actually watch our videos don't subscribe. Subscribing costs you absolutely nothing, helps us out a ton, helps us to grow the channel, helps to get it into the U YouTube algorithm, and we'd really appreciate that uh, that subscribe. But without further ado, let's have a look at cores 12 through 7. Enjoy. Okay, first up on the list is going to be from Hawthorne, New Jersey, uh, the Muchachos. And if you are looking at this image and thinking, hey, I've seen the Caballeros before, well, you're probably not too far wrong because the Muchachos wore a very similar uniform, same color palette, uh, black trousers, red cummerbund, uh, black vest with like a, a red and gold trim on it, and of course the white shirts. Uh, because they were the uh, Mucha or the Muchachos were the Caballeros Junior Corps. Uh, they were founded in 1959. Uh, competed in DCI from 1972 uh, through 1977. Now, the interesting thing about this core is it's probably the best core that we'll never know it, did they win or not, because they might have won in 1975. They might not have. We don't know, um, because they were disqualified for marching an overage member in 1975. General uh, consensus, however, is that they did uh, place, I think it was second in prelims. We do know that they won uh, percussion in prelims by quite a considerable margin over Vanguard that year, uh, about six-tenths of a point, which during the Tick era was pretty enormous. Um, so... Nor throughout this, I'm going to generally try to be showing videos. However, there just aren't any good videos of this show. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to uh, play the music. So enjoy 1975 Muchachos.
Hawthorne Muchachos. So that was uh, a piece of music called uh, Pictures uh, de España uh, from the 1975 uh, show. Um, now, I'm generally speaking a brass guy, and usually I'd be the guy saying, oh, the brass was great. And you know what? The brass was smoking. Uh, that was all on G-Bugles, on uh, piston rotor G-Bugles at that. So if you ever see the old pictures of the old drum cores and, and the guys look like they're, they're, they've got really poor posture. It's not that they've got really poor posture. It's just the way you had to hold the horns because you, a, a, you had a piston. Sorry, you had a piston here and then a rotor here. So, yeah, they were, they were these really awkward horns to play. Um, I've had the pleasure of playing on a piston rotor bugle. I'm not that old, by the way, though. I didn't march with one. I've just had the chance to try one out. Uh, they play beautifully. They can take an average player and make you sound like an absolute stud. So anyway, yeah, uh, 1975 Muchachos, did they win? We don't know. Right, next up is going to be out of Hutchinson, Kansas, the Skyriders. Um, Skyriders uh, kind of, I think, should have a little bit of an asterisk next to their name on this list, and that is because those that are paying a little bit of attention will know that the Skyriders um, are registered as a sound sport team this year. There's also a show in Hutchinson, Kansas uh, on the DCI tour that is actually sponsored by the Skyriders as well. So we're going to be looking at... Um, I mean, the thing with Skyride is it's hard to pick a year um, because they really were a chameleon core back then. Um, back in a time when drum corps had a look and they stuck with that look, they had a style and they stuck with that style, the Skyriders broke the mold every year. Uh, 1982, they came out with like almost like these, these pimp cowboy looks and then uh, moved into a silky, flowy blouse type look and then of course there was what we're going to look at here 1987 um which is very striking which is what they did for um for their uh, west side west side story show so we'll have a look at the 19 a little bit of the 1987 show and then talk about them so uh so while i'm uh you get to see my ugly mug while i'm uh changing screens over here and all right okay 1987 skyriders here we go Just remember the whole thing with the with the gun here. It was a different time. Of course, of course you wouldn't see something like this in today's shows. Back in this time, though, the Skyriders were really known for being storytellers. And their guards always were just really, really good and really great at telling stories. Also, this black and white look was just absolutely revolutionary at the time, and they used it to great effect, as you can see. Everybody thinks the cadets were the first one to do it. Nope, it was Skyriders, actually. Love the pop of color with the guard here, though, is when compared to the, the starkness of the core proper. was very much a color guard driven show and they didn't hide that fact. So yeah, that was the Skyriders. Um, really cool core with a really cool back catalog. Um, can't wait to see if they make it back out to the field. I'd be I'd be totally stoked to see that. Um, so a little bit of Skyriders trivia as well for those that are into kind of alternative punk pop rock. I don't know what you would actually call the genre, but the band Three Eleven, the drummer, the drummer for the band Three Eleven, Chad Sexton was actually in the video clip that I just showed you. He played Snare in the 1987 Skyrider. So uh, if if you're back, welcome back, Hutch. And I can't wait to take you off this list. But if, but for the meantime, 
Uh, our 11th place core on this list was, of course, the Skyriders. Right on that. Uh, next up on this list is, of course, from Anaheim, California, the Velvet Knights, founded in 1963. They made finals eight times in that in their time. First year they made finals was 1984. Uh, we're going to have a little look at the 1984 show as well as, of course, the end of the 1992 show. I'm not showing the other, the 87, 88, because everybody's seen all the Magical Mystery Tour stuff to the nth degree. I'm going to show 1984 because it was a pretty cool show. The bit that I'm going to show I think is pretty cool. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so Velvet Knights, what I'm going to say very quickly is um, in 1989, they had Kurt Gowdy was the uh, was the co-host of the PBS broadcast because back then we were still on PBS. And Kurt Gowdy did this thing when VK came on and he said, oh, here they go, the clown princes of drum corps. Right. I am just going to very easily call complete and utter bullshit on that because the thing you forget about the Velvet Knights is that they rehearsed just as hard as every other drum corps on that field. And on top of that, I would suggest it's actually harder to be funny than it is to be straight. And I do think, and I genuinely think this for pretty much every year that VK existed in that time that they decided, when, when Bobby Hoffman got involved with the core and they decided to go down the crowd entertainment route. I don't call it the funny route. I call it the crowd entertainment route. I think that that decision from a design standpoint probably cost VK placement points every single year. Um, I would generally say wherever VK finished, they probably should have finished probably at least two places above where they did. But is what it is um and quite frankly doesn't really matter who cares uh they were a great drum corps um even though they were uh rivals of the freelancers while we were rivals on the field we were quite good friends off of it and there was probably a bit of a mutual admiration between both organizations uh anyway in the meantime let's without further ado have a look at the 1984 velvet knights and then we'll follow it up with 1992 enjoy Shout out for unrequited love. Thank you. 
Right. Truth be told, I probably let this section of the of the video go on a little bit too long. But number one, A, I like the Velvet Knights. B, it's my video. If you don't like it, make your own. Uh, and C, I wanted you to hear the crowd impact at the end of that show. And that, to me, is just what is missing in today's DCI. DCI desperately needs a Velvet Knights, if not the Velvet Knights, at least our Velvet Knights. And I think there was a couple of cores that have flir sort of flirted with the idea. Uh, we all remember Jersey Surf did the uh, really crowd entertaining shows, still do crowd entertaining shows, but but really started to go down that sort of uh, sticky um, uh, uh, slapstick sort of route where they did the Elvis show, they did Bridge Mania. Uh, and then the other core, a little bit of a surprising one that I think was a giant swing and a miss whiffed opportunity was Academy. When they did the bunny show, there was bits of that show that had definite elements, excuse me, had definite elements of the Velvet Knights in there. And I think they could have developed it and ran away with the idea. And I think the crowds would have eaten it up. Uh, instead, what we have with Academy is a very good drum corps. And I'm not bagging on the organization at all. I'm not bagging on the marchers. But I see a drum corps that's devoid of an identity. Um, they're always a good drum corps that... So, uh, anyway, so that is, of course, the Velvet Knights. Not the Clown Princes, but a damn good drum corps. Okay, next up we have, from Racine, Wisconsin, the Kilties. The Kilties Drum and Bugle Corps was founded in 1935. They make the top 12 of this list by way of six DCI finalist appearances. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, with a high water mark in the DCI era of fifth place. Uh, which they placed in 1973. Unfortunately, I can't find any good video of that 1973 show, but what I'm going to show you is a bit of the 1978 show. They placed 12th that year. Um, however, we're going to play uh, Scotland the Brave and, of course, uh, Old Lang Syne, which were uh, two two songs that the core was uh, pretty notorious for. Um, so some things about the Kilties I would say to, to watch out for. Obviously, a very, very strong Scottish influence. Uh, very unique uniform. Uh, some folks might remember the Kilties uh, by the fact that uh, they have recently competed in Drum Corps Associates on that circuit as a co-ed corps. When they were a junior corps, they were actually an all-male corps. Uh, so it hasn't always just been the Cavies and the Scouts. The all-male and all-female corps were uh, pretty common back in the day. So, uh, so without further ado, uh, I give you the Kilties. uniform is absolutely no joke. I bet it was uh, pretty complicated to, to, to just put on.
So yeah, there is uh, the Kilties uh, from Racine, Wisconsin. Um, <coughs> little side note. Excuse me, I got something on my chest here. A little bit of a side note. Uh, in 1990 and 91, or it might have been 91 and 92, I can't remember, uh, I participated in the Drum Corps West and Drum Corps Midwest All-Stars uh, Drum Corps that compete that uh, uh, performed an exhibition, sorry, uh, at the uh, Fiesta Bowl Parade uh, in Phoenix. And we played uh, that uh, rendition of Auld Lang Syne. But we did that rendition of Old Lang Syne with about 350 brass. Um, it was wicked loud. It was wicked dirty. It was wicked fun to play. So um, I look at cores like uh, I look at cores like the Kilties and like 27th Lancers and you know some of the really more traditional cores that that if you look at how they how they fared when the tick system went away i look at those sorts of cores and i wonder if they were still around how would they have evolved and i do find that quite interesting could a core like the kilties have evolved into the modern style of drum corps and what would that have looked like um but we'll never know because obviously uh, they're on this list which means that sadly uh, they no longer exist so from racing wisconsin the kilties Next up on the list from Anaheim, California, is, of course, DCI's uh, inaugural uh, world champion, the Anaheim Kingsman. So Kingsman only made the made DCI finals three times, but I'll tell you what, the three times they made finals, they sure as hell made it count. They won it in 1987. They were sixth place in 1973, third place in 1974, and because the 70s were crazy as far as drum cores and scoring and all that stuff, 1976, they were 19th place. Go figure. Um, never made finals again. Uh, the core was founded in 1965 and finally folded up shop in uh, 1986. Though I do seem to remember them in 1987, whether they were out an exhibition only in the California region, I'm not sure. But I do distinctly recall the Anaheim Kingsman from uh, 1987. But anyway, according to Drum Corps X Museum, it's 1986 was when they ended. And if Drum Corps X Museum says that, then that must be the case. Um, so Anaheim Kingsman, 1972, they did uh, March from Folk Song Suite. Uh, when Johnny comes marching home. I'll be honest with you, I don't know a great deal about the Anaheim Kingsman because they were so relatively short-lived and it was a long time ago i'm afraid i do know that there was a lot a lot of dci royalty came out of the anaheim kings i believe ralph hardeman was involved with them i think scott johnson was involved with them in some aspect um tom float i mean there was there, there they had some some of the biggest names in the history of the activity have been in and out of that organization in the short time that they were around we're going to have a look today at the 1972 show uh, about three minutes of that show, and I'll give you my thoughts afterwards. Enjoy.
And the final core in today's video is the one that, well, quite frankly, I've been looking forward to. First off, I would, uh, I was going to say the name, but tell you what, why don't I just let the core introduce themselves? That's right, from Sacramento, California, the Freelancers. Uh, so uh, this is the core that both Justin and I marched in. I marched in the core from 1987 through 1992, and Justin marched in the core from 1989 through 93 or 4, I can't remember. Um, anyway, uh, so Sacramento Freelancers formed in 1964, originally as the Capital Airs, which was an all-girl drum and bugle corps. Uh, eventually uh, uh, went co-ed, adopted the name Sacramento Freelancers, uh, came out of the VFW chapter, I believe it was the Manhart chapter of the VFW in Sacramento. Um, the corps was started by Parker Silva, who led the corps all the way through the end of the uh, organization parker sadly passed a couple years ago uh he was preceded in death by his son don who was the percussion caption head for many many years uh and of course uh the beautiful grace silva uh we lost grace uh, during my age out year in uh in uh, 1992. um so the sacramento freelancers in and out of finals uh, but did make finals 10 times out of the 20 years that they were in dci so uh, uh lowest i think that we ever scored in the dci era was 19th place uh, which we scored in my rookie year um and the highest was uh 83 i believe it was with an eighth place uh finish we'll have a look at a couple of clips today uh number one is going to be from the 1984 freelancers followed up by a little bit of the 1991 show and because it's my video and I'm the one controlling it. We're going to show you a little bit of the 1987 Freelancers. And there's a little story behind that core, which I'll tell you when we get to that. But first things first, 1984 Freelancers. Enjoy. Just a very distinct sound. I called it the John Zimney sound. It was, I think we were one of those cores that you could just play a C major chord and with my eyes closed I could tell you which one was the Freelancers. So you'll notice that the guard there was uh, chucking soprano bugles around. And the reason for that was is that the opening statement of the show, the entire color guard uh, was on soprano. Um, so next up, we'll have a look at the 1991 show. We're gonna sh I'm going to show you the ballad, which is a piece called The Kiss from Back to the Future. Um, the soprano soloist is somebody that you may recognize if you're a Blue Devils fan. Uh, it's a gentleman by the name of Scott Stewart who went on to march Blue Devils um from 93 i think through uh 95 something like that uh enjoy
that's the 1991 freelancers um i always like to show that show because i think that that was possibly the possibly the best horn line that the freelancers ever had the next little bit i'm going to show you the final little bit i'm going to show you of the core is from the 1987 show and the reason i'm showing the 1987 show yes we came in 19th place we were the lowest place in core in the history of the freelancers i think the the core placed 19th one other time um it's nothing to do with the placement i just want to tell you a little bit about the core and i think that the 1987 core symbolizes what the freelancers were all about the freelancers were about grit and determination and carrying on we had a core song that that that, that alluded to that in its lyrics um that being said uh, the core folded in 1986 and folded very late in the year, folded in uh, around May of 1986. Um, and when the core made the decision, it was just because of money. Uh, when the core made the decision to come back in 1987, um, there was some serious questions whether there was going to be a drum corps that year because the camp turnouts said completely otherwise. Uh, we didn't even start learning music until march uh we didn't actually put the first tiny bit of drill on the field until 10 to 10s uh or what they now call spring training back then that was pretty unusual you started learning drill as early as you possibly could now we didn't we simply didn't have enough members to effectively learn drill um the core uh started first tour back then you had two different tours you had first tour and nationals tour we started first tour with nearly 30 holes in the brass line and we were actually filling the holes on the road so uh back then like the likes of blue devils b santa clara vanguard cadets so on and so on, although they were called santa clara vanguard b back then they didn't do full tours and um so when their last show was we were just picking up their members whereas where and when we could in the end we ended up marching, I think it was 57 brass in the end. Um, the reason I want to show you this little clip, it's just a little bit, a little bit of the opener, um, is I want you to bear in mind that the drum corps you're about to see has six veterans on the field. I'm not talking six freelancers veterans. I am talking six drum corps veterans on the field, and that is it. And that also the drum corps you're going to be you're going to be seeing here in just a second. The average age of this corps was barely, and I mean barely, 17. So, the 1987 freelancers, which in all the years that I marched, I can honestly say I marched freelancers 87 through 92. I marched with the Kids Grove Scouts from 2016 to 2019. I also marched in another drum corps here in the UK, the uh, Cheshire Cadets. Um, my time at Kids Grove Scouts, we had undefeated seasons. We were European champions. Uh, I marched in Freelancers finalist scores three times. And the single season, the single drum corps that I am most proud to have been involved with was the one that you're about to see right now. So 1987 Freelancers. Enjoy.
and that is the 1987 freelancers so that wraps it up for uh this section of of the top 12. in the next video we're going to look at the suncoast sound bridgman glassman star of indiana 27th lancers and of course the cadets um Thank you for watching. If you like what we do, as I asked, as I asked earlier on the video, it'd be great if you could just uh, hit the old uh, subscribe and like button and uh, ring the bell. Other ways you can support us, we have a merchandise store. Uh, links are in the uh, in the comment section, as well as uh, we do also have a membership scheme. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you for watching, and uh, until the next time, you know what to do. March on.